you like to pause from your busy day and listen in to experts and homeschool parents like you about the beautiful world of homeschooling? This podcast is designed just for you. Each episode connects you to the best conversations that will give you courage and fill your cup so you can keep pouring into your family every single day. Introducing the Hey Mama Homeschool Show, brought to you by The Old School House, your trusted homeschool partner for over 20 years. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Hey Mama Homeschool Show. My name is Christine Weller, and I will be your host for this episode. And just to tell you a little bit about myself, I am homeschooling two boys here in Ontario, Canada. I have the privilege of working for schoolhouseteachers.com and the Canadian Schoolhouse, which are both divisions of the old schoolhouse. And I've got a treat for you. I I am being joined by a good friend of mine, Kristen Stewart, and she also works uh, with us at the Canadian Schoolhouse. And you may have seen her name pop up here and there, depending on where you are looking um, around in our company sites. But I am so glad to to have her here and to talk about um, today's topic, which I'll tell you is called Raising Boys, Raising Girls. Welcome, Kristen. Thanks, Christine. I'm really happy to be here. So as Christine said, my name is Kristen Stewart, and I am the proud girl mama of my, <laughs> my 11 and 9-year-old girls. They are homeschooled. And yes, I work for the Canadian Schoolhouse, and I also work for another division of the old schoolhouse. So we're busy, busy ladies raising our boys and our girls. Uh-huh. It's it's definitely a challenge and we can definitely attest to we're finding that work home life balance, but we do love the fact that we can uh, keep our kids at home and we are grateful for the opportunities that God has given us to provide for our families financially. And so and that's all a part of, you know, our daily walks. And so we're talking about you know, raising boys and raising girls. And I, when I had this topic, I I thought, well, I don't know anything about raising girls. I I only have boys. And uh, I know you mentioned the, the ages of your girls and my guys are currently 11 and almost seven. (laughs) He's counting down the days to his birthday. So I can, I can tell you all there is to about raising, raising boys, but for sure, raising girls is, not my uh, line of expertise. And so we got together, Kristen and I, and we started chatting and we, we did realize that, you know, there are differences obviously, but we quickly found out that our children were not typical of, you know, the, the kind of stereotypes that are out there, you know, girls like to play with Barbies and boys like to play with cars. We, we, no, for sure, we can't say that because our our children are very different. And while Kristen has two girls, they're both different in their personalities. And my two boys, again, they're not similar either. They're they've got very different personalities as well. And so we decided to talk about the fact that we are raising our boys and girls with one goal in mind, and that is to raise our children to be independent well-rounded individuals and you know because we are keeping them home and educating them here we're looking every day for opportunities to help them learn all that they can so that you know they are equipped for the world out there when they do leave home and so we kind of broke down some basic skills that we are teaching both our boys and girls and hopefully this is a, an encouragement to you so our first point that obviously we want all of our kids to know is about life skills, you know, and and I could tell you, having been out there in the world, in the public education system, and, you know, just doing youth groups here and there through the church and stuff, you know, life skills is not as common as you think. And I feel like it's it's our duty it's our responsibility to make sure that our kids are equipped 
to do the basic life skills like cooking a meal for themselves, you know, keeping themselves clean, keeping their surroundings clean. These are these are not as common as you think. And I, I I'll tell you, I was shocked to know that, you know, there were some young adults who <laughs> who don't even know how to how to make a simple meal for themselves. And, you know, they've left home and, you know, buying McDonald's and stuff like that because they don't know how to, it's just, whew, it's a mess. So. Well, um, Christine, get ready for me to just blow your socks <laughs> off here because <laughs> I am that person. I no. didn't know how to do anything. No, I I don't we did not it. have any chores. I went to university as a energetic 17 year old that thought the world was in front of her, but my <laughs> mommy had to teach me how to use the washing machine when she dropped me off at oh. my university apartment and I didn't know how to cook anything. I was putting fish stick, you know, frozen fish sticks into the oven oh. with some potato chips or something on the side <laughs> because I hadn't cooked a meal. So and I use that example to my daughters all the time saying, listen, it was embarrassing not knowing yeah. how to do any of this stuff as a 17 year old when I went to university. And then my roommates would be mad at me because I wasn't keeping up with the chores around the house. So I said, you girls are going to thank me one yeah. day. Not today, obviously, but one day you are going to thank me that you've learned how to do these things. Yeah. And, and see, and that's, and that's, what we want to avoid we we don't want to send them out into the world and and then have people think what didn't your parents teach you anything like <laughs> mm-hmm. because it is it, it falls on us why didn't we teach them we can't rely okay even if you're if you're not have, teaching your kids at home right now the public school is certainly not going to teach them those things it's it's up to us as parents to, to teach them these skills and so you know things like you know, sewing on a button or, or how to hem a pants. Those are skills that are totally lost right now. And we have the opportunity to make sure that we incorporate these little life skills into our daily teaching, you know, in between all the math and the the language arts and, and all of those subjects. Mind you, you can, you can probably do some of, some of these with, with math and science, like, like cooking lessons in the kitchen, We've got a few ideas for you at the Canadian Schoolhouse if you if you are interested in learning more. And I will pop in to say that Kristen has submitted some wonderful recipes that she does with her family. So she can she has <laughs> learned and she does have some wonderful ideas for your family. Um, That's I true. I didn't clear that up. I'm not a 40 year old who also can't cook <laughs> or do my laundry. I have improved and grown in the last 20 some years. Now I can do those things. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. And she's got some wonderful ideas. And so definitely um, look for those recipes and all sorts of ideas about teaching your kids about life skills through the Canadian Schoolhouse content that we've got online. And one of the other points we wanted to talk about was emotional skills. And again, this is something that needs to be tackled at home. And I mean, oh my word, how much more important it is to tackle this area at home in such a safe space because emotions so quickly, especially when they're getting to those older ages. So we both have preteens right now. And I'm sure we're so looking forward to the teenage years, but we're, I know for, for in my house, emotions run high (laughs) very often. And, and see, this is one of the topics that we wanted to talk about because, you know, the, the misconception is that, you know, girls are more emotional than boys. And I'm here to tell you, my guys get very emotional and we have had to learn how to, deal with them and I love that Kristen has pointed out in our pre-chat before we came on was that you know we want to do this in a godly way and this is exactly what I want for my children the world has ideas on how we should control ourselves but it's not always the best way and so God created our emotions so 
it's not something that we can deny. Getting angry is totally natural. Getting sad is totally natural. And it's just a matter of knowing what to do with these emotions and how God intended us to use these emotions. So what do you right. think, Kristen? No, <laughs> I, I feel like even though I have two daughters, they both express their feelings in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think that we're doing our kids justice if we say we're going to approach our girls this way and our boys this way. I think it really is exactly. best if we just, I'm going to parent each child in the way that that child needs me to parent them or to yeah. shepherd them. If we think about it in biblical language, like giving each of our children what they need. And so for some, one of my daughters actually uses her hands and her fists, which ah. is not gender stereotypical of a no. female necessarily. And that is how she deals with her emotions and her anger. Whereas the other one, more so uses her words, her stomping, her door yeah. slamming, her tears. And neither of those reactions are the way that the Lord wants us to handle our emotions. Right. Not even though it's a very natural reaction. And of course, even as parents, we don't always react godly to our emotions. But that's good because, well, it's not good, but we have the ability to show them how we have to rein our emotions in, how we have to apologize when need be to ourselves, to the person we've hurt, to God. And we just can show them how to try to bring ourselves back under control with the Holy Spirit's help. One of the things I really like to do, especially when my kids are younger, but even still now with my nine-year-old, is to read some picture books about emotions there's Mm -hmm. one that I got from focus on the family it's called what am I feeling and it is really good it's a follows this little boy to school and he is nervous and afraid but some of his classmates end up dealing with different emotions like anger and it kind of talks through all of those and a phrase that's repeated in that book is a feeling is just a feeling it's not in charge of you And so I try to Mm. say that verbiage with her, we read it in the book, so she recognizes it. And then that's something that I can use over and over with her that it doesn't have to be in charge of you. Yes, you're feeling it, that's your feeling, but what you act, that's your responsibility. What Mm -hmm. you're going to, what action you're going to do with that feeling is up to you. And that's where things go wrong and where we sin. Right, right. And that is so important. And and how much more beneficial this is to teach them this as they're learning, as they're discovering these emotions, learning how to deal with it right from the get-go. Because so many times, you know, how many times have we come across an adult who just couldn't control their emotions or just didn't know what to do with this onset of negative emotions? And and as I mentioned before, I mean, and and as you mentioned too, these emotions are natural. They we can't, they they happen, and so just learning and giving them the keys to know how to deal with this from the get go is just it's so important and so valuable. Could you imagine them learning this, you know, in a room with strangers? And that's what I tell tell them and tell myself is how beneficial this is that we can come alongside them so they're not just being told no don't hit or no don't yell at someone which is true of course they shouldn't do that but right. instead we have the time we're here we have to come alongside them and help them figure out what to do when they have that feeling instead of just telling them don't do the action but they're thinking yeah. like but I have this feeling like I yeah don't know so what, what else am I supposed I to, to do out. yeah so we get to come alongside them and say okay, I can see that you're feeling very frustrated. Let's pray together. You know, we can model that for them for time until they are prepared to then, you know, as they get a little older, we can say, okay, I can see that you're feeling frustrated. You need to go and talk to God about it. You know, we can model it for them until they're ready to do it on their own. And then hopefully that's us discipling them into adulthood where hopefully they will be well-adjusted, well-rounded adults who can handle their emotions in a godly way 
And I think that for us here with my daughters anyways, the connection between us helps a lot with that Mm -hmm. because they have to feel safe to show me their emotion, which kids usually do feel that safety at home. Yeah. But especially as they get older into the preteen years and probably the teen, but I'm not there to talk about that yet. (laughs) She needs to trust me with all those things she's feeling. And there are so many feelings for a preteen girl. Mm. It is just an explosion of feelings, but that's just part of life as your hormones change. And I think it's part of my responsibility to tell her Mm. that what she's feeling is okay. It's normal. It's part of what's going on in her body. It won't be like that forever. And still teaching her how to, you know, manage that in a way that can still honor God and honor her family and the people that she's coming in contact with. But if we didn't have a a relationship, then she wouldn't want to hear what I have to say, or she might not trust me with those big feelings. Right, right. Well, for me and my boys, I have started from from the start uh, as soon as we outbursts would happen we sit down and we have a conversation about it because I want my boys to know because there is that stereotype that you know boys don't cry mm-hmm. and boys have to be tough they have to man up and all of this stuff and I want my boys to know that it's okay to cry it's okay to be hurt like you're allowed to feel and we talk about it and so obviously I try to encourage them like there's certain certain things that we don't cry about because I don't mm-hmm. don't need any whiny babies <laughs> around the house. so you know but for the important stuff you know when it really matters and you feel like you know you were hurt and you need to cry about it it's okay and you know Jesus wept too so mm-hmm. it's that that is an emotion that is you're allowed to feel and you know exactly the the same thing for when you're angry something obviously made you angry but let's talk about it instead of hitting your brother <laughs> mm-hmm. which just seems to be the go to uh reaction but what can we do to solve this problem because obviously you're upset because of a problem so it's it's helping them see beyond the emotion and so from since they were little and able to understand to have sit down and have a conversation about it we, we do that. And so, and I'll tell you as a parent, it gets exhausting. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to have these conversations, but because it's just so easy to just say, go to your room, right? It's so easy to just say, uh-huh. you know what? I don't have time to deal with this. You guys just hug and make up and not talk about it and just let leave me alone. Um, <laughs> because, you know, we feel it too. We feel it. We feel their frustrations as well. But I'll tell you, just to encourage you, if you're dealing with that right now in your home, stick with it because it's going to pay off in the long run. There, You're going to see slowly that they're going to be able to manage it on their own. For the most part, my 11-year-old can recognize, you know, he's upset about something or he's getting angry and he'll take himself and, you know, either give himself a five-minute timeout or walk away or come and tell me, like, I'm getting upset about this. And so he knows to come and have that conversation, which is it's which is encouraging to me that he's getting it, he's understanding. And so like he's eleven and he's realizing this. So like I'm a little bit more confident knowing that he's going into these teenage years where we read about when <laughs> Kristen and I can't talk to it yet, mm-hmm. but we read about, you know, those years being the most difficult because because of all the challenges that they have to deal with. And it's a whole new world uh, for them and for the parents. And so I am a little bit more confident that he's going to have some of these skills already in place uh, when he gets to that. And and hey, it's harder on a firstborn (laughs) when they have to go through all of this stuff and learn all of and then they're like, well, how come my brother doesn't have to do that? How come my brother doesn't, you know, talk about it? And he just punches me and okay, but <laughs> but see, this is your responsibility as an older child to learn these things so that the younger ones see it. It it is what it is. I was the older child and that fell on me too. And mm-hmm. so this is one thing that my firstborn and I have in common. So when he thinks 
you know, life is not fair because he has to be the responsible one. I'm like, oh, well, guess what? <laughs> You're a firstborn. <laughs> so am so, I. <laughs> yeah. See, see, but we're okay. We're okay. You, you, you deal with it. It's, it's, it's hard stuff and life is full of hard stuff. And I, and I always try to say, you know, you're dealing with this now. When you're an adult, you're going to be dealing with all kinds of situations that are going to be similar and you need to know what to do. And guess what? When you're an adult, you're going to have, you're going to have a family to deal with too. So you need to keep yourself together, right? You need to learn to keep it together. And hopefully this is, you know, it's going to stick. That's our, that's our prayer that they're going to, and, and God's going to give, you know, we pray that God's going to give us the wisdom to know, you know, how to have these conversations with them, find them the words and, and see, you're the best person to talk to them because you know them and you know what they can receive and what they're not going to receive. You know, what's going to trigger them and what's not going to trigger them. So you are the best person to actually teach uh, these emotional skills on how to handle it in a, in a godly way. Mm -hmm. And even just as, you know, a female raising daughters, I feel like when they're talking about different struggles with friends or, you know, self-esteem or things like that, I can, I feel like I can relate to that and I can mm -hmm. give them a little bit of advice from past that point, you know, that, yeah, I've been there too. That was really hard. I understand how you're feeling. Yeah. I can see why you feel this way. It won't always feel like this, like yeah. to give them a little bit of hope and to say, you know, God was there for me through all of that. He will be there for you through all of that. If you reach out and ask him. And I find that one part of raising daughters to be really good that I can understand, but it's also very emotionally exhausting for sure to coach them almost like through all their mm -hmm. emotions and feelings. It does feel like a coach's job because you're like, okay, remember, remember what we talked about. Come on, you can do it. So we're going to cheer you on mama. <laughs> if you're, if you're going <laughs> you through this, we can, if we can do it, you can do it. Think of it like the, like I planted these blueberry bushes last year and I, use this gardening analogy all the time but it's like <laughs> I get these little bushes and I plant them and like they get two berries and then like <laughs> the next year this year I think they've got like 40 berries or something Ooh. but like eventually they're gonna be giant bushes full of lots of berries but that takes a lot of work and patience and I think yeah is a lot like that you know we start with something little and we have to take care of it and we have to have patience and little by little it will produce more and more fruit if we are just you know faithful to do what we need to do and I try to tell myself that about parenting all the time it's not like we just have our kids and then all of a sudden it's done yeah, <laughs> you know, there's yeah. A lot of work it's a lifelong it's a lifelong commitment for sure Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a it's a good reminder. And hey, if when you're seeing those little blueberries, <laughs> those little moments where they're doing well and they're they're they've sh they're showcasing these skills, it's so important to just stop and just acknowledge that because mm -hmm. that's gonna encourage that growth. That's that's you watering that blueberry bush mm -hmm. and you know adding that sunshine to it. So that they can, they remember, they'll, they'll remember that in their, in their head and in their heart that, okay, this was, I did good here. I did good mm -hmm. here. And this was a good, oh, I see the, the good results. And I will point that out. I said, you see, because you did that, or because you said that, you see how well that turned out. And then they'll go, yes. And then, you know, they'll, they'll nod their heads and like, okay, so remember that for next time. And then you move mm -hmm. on. <laughs> so yeah, just remember to look for those positive moments. And and because it, it is a roller coaster. That's why we call it an emotional roller coaster, because it's always ups and downs. But it's in those ups that we point it out and acknowledge those good times. And then, you know, we help each other through those downs. And they'll be okay. They'll by the time they're they're out of our are out of our homes, they'll they'll be accustomed to it. So they'll know they'll know the movement. They'll know the 
the way that they should go. And so, yeah, keep going. And the final point that we wanted to bring up is uh, social skills. You know, I think we talked, we covered a little bit about it, like, you know, conflict Mm -hmm. resolution and respecting others, but through the emotional skills, but yeah, social skills, again, with how to communicate with others. I mean, boy, does the world have a set of ways that is so opposite (laughs) against what scriptures are telling us how to interact with one another um, in the, not only with our families, but with those around us in the, in the world. It's so important to just make sure that we live by the word of God. I tell my kids all the time, what better place to learn how to deal with someone you don't get along with than in a safe place, like your home with your mm-hmm. sibling, who's going to love you regardless. You know, there's, yeah. I say there's always everywhere you go, there's going to be people that annoy you or that you disagree with or that are unkind to you or rude to you but they're not all going to also love you so here at home you get to learn how to handle these situations with your sibling and you still end up you know with your sibling that loves you you you, if you mess it up you get a chance to learn and practice these skills and you still end up you know with that hopefully lifelong friendship and love for each other and I think too, like having that sibling and or or family relationship, it just I mean, you you almost have to love each other. And I love the fact that, you know, they know how they know at the end of the day that they should love people. And so, you know, that is my prayer that when they have relationships with other people outside of the home, again, that is in their mindset that I got to love this person at the end of the day. So yes, we don't always agree with people. And I don't know about your girls, but my, my guys have this love hate relationship and it's not just, I know it's not just my boys. (laughs) I hate my brother. I'm like, really? And then two seconds later, I love you. I, I walk by and they're saying, I love you. And it's like, Okay, you guys are hilarious. But but at the end of the day, that's what I that's that's what you know, they love each other and they can't imagine I mean, these guys are planning on, you know, we're gonna we're gonna buy a huge house and we're gonna have all of our families living together in the same house because we love you know (laughs) we're gonna do everything together. I'm like, okay, well we'll see how that goes. But (laughs) but teaching them how to have that conflict of resolution again, you start from the from the get-go so you don't let things fester right so if you have a disagreement you're not you're not being angry for days and days and days that's not biblical Mm -hmm. whatsoever yeah and we like to listen to seeds worship i don't know if you've ever heard of it Mm -hmm. it's a company Mm -hmm. that puts bible verses to music so like an entire track the whole song is one verse and it's just kind of like over and over it's for families kind of for kids but it gets stuck in your head And one of the verses, one of the songs is a verse from Psalms that says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's like Ah. pretty much the whole song. So we, you know, it gets stuck in everybody's heads that the kids have heard that lot. And that's something that I will remind them of lots out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you're saying to your sister, Mm. is that a reflection of the love you have in your heart for your sister? What Mm. is the words coming out of your mouth? What are they saying about what's in your heart? Mm. Is this like such a good reminder? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like in Ephesians where it says to not let corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but what is good for building others up? So Mm. I say, is this building up or tearing down? Yeah, I need to keep this one. Yeah, I need to put this one up on the wall. (laughs) We had that one up on our whiteboard once and we would like say it every morning before school, like in our school area. Like, Let's talk about some examples of speech that would build each other up. (laughs) Oh, yeah, we and and this is such a good practice to do just overall, because who doesn't like hearing positive comments, right? Because, you know, we can get busy doing our day to day stuff and just get lost in the tasks and stuff and just to encourage one another and to lift one another up. Like that's what, that's what family should be there for. Mm -hmm. And I think you had another verse that you wanted to share too. 
Oh, from Deuteronomy. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that one not necessarily goes along with social skills, but just about parenting in general and, Mm -hmm. you know, coming alongside our kids as they're growing up to train them up in the way that like God would want us to, and to remind them of all that God has done for us and done for people in the world. And so it's from Deuteronomy chapter six, verse six to nine. And these words, which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sit in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou lie down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. So just really a good reminder for parents that at all times of the day, it doesn't have to be sitting down before a meal or before bed to do a devotion and to pray. While those are very important things, they don't need to be the only times of the day that we're discipling our kids. That that's something that we get the honor and the privilege of doing all day long as homeschool parents. You know, that should always be at the tip of our tongue. Mm -hmm. Ways for them to honor the Lord and praises to the Lord. And that's just you know, that should become such a natural part of our home and of our life that it deeply ingrained into them. Mm-hmm. And again, I love how this verse is, is for everyone. And so, mm-hmm. you know, whether the world tries to tell you, oh, you know, you're raising boys or, oh, you're raising girls. So it must be this way or that way. When we, when we lean on the word of God, gender doesn't matter. This is for everyone. And so, and this is what we want our kids to, to, to grow up knowing as well. This, every word of, that God has spoken is for everyone. And it doesn't matter, you know, what the world tells you that you should be doing, especially now that the world has this messed up Yeah, we're not listening way. to the world right now. <laughs> yeah, messed up version of what boys and girls look like right now. It's so important to just rely on the word of God. Um, and you you won't go astray when when you do that. So hopefully this has encouraged you. We encourage you to continue the conversation and head on over to homeschoolshow.com and be sure to check out for extra links for articles, house teachers, resources and courses, et cetera. We'll have all uh, these scriptures that we mentioned in the show notes. And I've got a few uh, announcements for you. I will uh, let you know about homeschoolcollegedirectory.com. If you're getting ready for your team to fly off to post-secondary school, we've at the old schoolhouse, we've got the homeschool college directory and resources for you. And this includes colleges that are really vying for the attention of homeschoolers. Definitely check that out and visit homeschoolcollegedirectory.com. And NAC is back. You can register your 12 to 18 year old today for the annual opportunity for homeschool students to put their college knowledge to the test on a national level with the National Academic Homeschool Competition or NAC, uh, which is brought to you by the Old Schoolhouse and College Options Foundations. And if you haven't already, be sure to download the TOS app. That's where you will find the fall issue of the Old School House magazine, along with dozens of timeless searchable back issues. And here are some of the topics coming up this fall. Teaching, writing, grammar, spelling, growing and canning food, homeschool dads, science, heritage, and college. There's so much more for your homeschool, so be sure to go to homeschoolapp.com or you can go online to visit our digital magazine library at tosmagazine.com. And don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to. A new episode of the Hey Mama Homeschool Show comes out every Monday. Here's what's coming up. When should you teach foreign language and why? Meal planning. And then, does anyone but me care about this chaos? Be sure to mark those on your calendar, and we pray that you have a blessed week. And thank you, Kristen, for joining us today, and we'll chat again next time.